Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of JV's Trains. Today we um, are doing a Sir Nigel Gresley day, so I've got all my Gresley engines on the track, just them. I've got the Flying Scotsman in Brunswick Green with the gloss finish, as I have previously sort of shown on my channel. I then have the TTS Sound Cock of the North in the LNER Apple Green. Then coming along here, I then have the A4 Silver Link um, in the um, sort of off white um, uh, Silver Jubilee um, finish. Beside that, I have the, another Flying Scotsman, this time in wartime black. And then the last engine at the end in another A4, but in um, BR Blue is the golden eagle so we've got a lot of um a lot of gresley engines we've got three different classes and we've got um five different liveries between those um i think apart from ooh, what other liveries there there is potentially i've i have seen some engines some a4s in sort of an experimental like purple and orange sort of livery for british railway um, other than that, I think we pretty much have every single livery there was. So, just going to take some time, talk about each individual engine, and then um, have some running time with each engine as well. So first of all, first engine running is going to be the British Rail uh, Brunswick Green Flying Scotsman. Um, this is the limited edition um, uh, engine released by Locomotion Models to represent the new um, recently restored Flying Scotsman. Um, it's got this really nice sort of gloss finish as you can see. It also came with this National Railway Museum um, support coach which is something you don't really see very often or if at all until now. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I've got some the only actual Gresley um, coaches I had were LNER railroad coaches, um, so potentially not 100% accurate, but um, it was just to sort of show you what it would look like with actual Gresley coaches. So, so yeah, let's just start it up and see how it runs. I think this is a really nice engine, and especially with the the support coach. I just I really like the combination of having that. It's just such a sort of rare thing. You very rarely see anything. I think Hornby of only well the only one that I know of is the Duchess of Sutherland they released with the support coach. But that wasn't the limited edition. That's um that was uh, what well, just a normal sort of year or two run. Um, but this is a limited edition of, I think it's about a thousand. So I'm very, very lucky to have one of these. This finish on the Flying Scotsman is obviously um, what it is finished in at the moment. Um, this being September of 2016. Um, I went up to York and saw this engine just after it had been um, uh, restored and it was in this finish. Obviously, when they first released it, it was in the wartime black, which I also have. But currently, what it's running in is this this livery here with this support coach behind.
Okay, so the next engine, we're going to stick with the Flying Scotsman, but this time, the wartime black Flying Scotsman. This is another sort of finish that I really, really like. Um, I'm not sure which is my favourite, actually, between the black and the Brunswick green. I think they're both both really sort of nice, but there's something about this matte black finish that I really, really, really like. But um, <clears throat> Obviously, even though it's wartime black, it is meant to reflect the wartime black, as you can see, that was at York um, when they first released um, the Flying Scotsman, um, sort of from sort of midway through the overhaul but once the sort of main bodywork was complete um, so yeah we're gonna have a look at this going around the tracks now um, some people may be wondering well, why I'm only sort of using this outside track and that's purely just because um, these two flying Scotsman I haven't yet put um, a digital decoder in the Cock of the North already comes fitted with one, with sound, and the two A4s I have already fitted a DCC decoder. But these two engines I have unfortunately not fitted a decoder to yet. So basically, this outside track, as you can see, is completely separate from those two inside lines. And all of those inside lines and all of those junctions over there um, are all... Uh, connected up with the little the little you can see them there the little things that pass the DCC current through all the points and I don't really want to I know you can technically run um, a DC engine on DCC but I just don't want to really risk it so I've got this outside track completely isolated um, and when I'm running DC I simply can unclip these two wires here, these ones here, and this track is completely uh, disconnected to well, the whole rest of the other track. So I can then solely sort of run on this track either DC for these two engines or I can unplug this plug right here, plug in the DCC over here and then um, have digital running on this track and if I haven't got any DC locos on I can then connect those two up and the whole circuit and like every single line can be um, DCC so that was just in case any of you were wondering why I'm only using this outside line Obviously, the wartime black flying Scotsman, as it is on this finish here, um, did actually run with the support coach, the York support coach behind it. Um, but I highly doubt very many of the Hornby models will have run with this coach fitted behind it because you obviously have to own this engine to own that support coach. So I think that's quite a cool, sort of unique feature. Um, and obviously, I guess, at the time, it probably would have actually been pulling these teak coaches. So this is probably the most accurate of the depictions so far. Okay, so the next engine we have is the first A4 of the pair. It's um, the Silver Link, which is obviously um, was the first A4 actually ever built. Um, there was this one, Quicksilver, Silver Fox, and Silver King, all built um, for the Silver Jubilee. Um, but 2509 being the first of those. And they were all finished in this really nice sort of white, where it's, it's more off-white. At the time, they couldn't actually perfect 
sort of the fine bright whites that we get now but it was sort of an off-white sort of grey with um, this sort of um, the black front section um, and the grey sort of streamlined casings along the side with um, this sort of white and blue writing which I think looks really cool um, I'm just going to be carrying the same coaches even though technically probably not correct out of this support coach but um, oh well we have switched over now to DCC um, <clears throat> so um, all the engines from now on are fitted with digital um, I could I guess if I wanted to um, have made the whole track digital but um, that would have meant taking the A3s off so I've just left it to the outside track and we'll have a look at this going around because I don't think I've actually previewed this um, on my channel before this engine sorry um, I have shown it I think once or twice maybe on Instagram um, if you haven't seen my Instagram it's at JB's underscore trains um, so so yeah this is actually a first I think for this engine on, on my channel but um, it's I, it's just a sort of I think a must have I think this off white in this sort of streamlined design is just a must have really um, just because it looks so unique I did remember um, or realise even that I do um, there's one livery I don't have which is the <clears throat> the Mallard sort of garter blue livery I didn't um, I thought I had missed sort of one or two but yeah, that Garter Blue livery is one that I don't have in the Bresley sort of collection. Um, so yeah, let's have just have a quick look at this going around, around my layout. Okay, so the penultimate engine, <clears throat> sorry, is the Golden Eagle number six zero zero two three, and it's finished in this British Rail blue, um, and does not have the streamlined casing over the wheels. Um, now, this personally for me is actually my favourite sort of livery and design of the A fours. I really like um, <clears throat> how the Sir Nigel Gresley is finished at right. Well. Obviously, it's mid restoration at the moment, but it had this finish before it went into restoration, and I just really, really liked it. Um, I actually went up and saw it mid restoration in York a few months ago, um, and I really hope they keep it in this sort of style um, because it's, it's definitely my favourite. Um, so, yeah, <clears throat> so same as the Silver Link essentially, but just in a sort of different finish. Um, just going to run the same coaches as well. Um, <clears throat> even though technically not not period accurate but um, oh well I think the A3 and the A4 lineup are just two sort of such incredible looking engines especially in these colour schemes um, I could just sort of sit and look at them all day, really.
Okay, so last but by no means least is the TTS Sound Cock of the North finishing apple green. Um, this is my first sort of sound locomotive and the sort of latest to be released by Gresley, um, so that's why I left it till last. Um, it's, well, it's a very big and hefty sort of engine. It was designed to um, run the Abedonian sort of route. Um, I have covered more sort of information in a previous video on this engine, but um, it sort of just shows how sort of good the Gresley design was because you can see the, the similarities between the two engines, even though they were built, what, 10 or so years apart. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, this is obviously going to have sound with it as well, which I will just turn on now. Now, as before mentioned, this engine for some reason only works when it's pulling a Pullman carriage or a Pullman car is on the line, so that's why that's there. So there we go, just a sort of quick video um, showing all my Gresley engines, um, just sort of honouring that sort of amazing uh, engineer. Um, I will be releasing some more videos uh, with the other sort of LMS, Stania, um, and like the Southern Rail engines as well, and um, I will be doing a general um, tour of my layout as well soon, so keep posted for that and like, share, subscribe and thank you for watching.